So I'm going to just stay with the theme of um, history, awakening. You know, God has obviously uh, started the, the gathering by taking us there. So um, I'm going to continue with that. Several years ago, quite a while back now, I don't know, maybe 20 years, I'm not sure, but the Lord just said to me very clearly, you don't know the power of history. And when the Lord says you don't know something, you just need to agree. Say, you're right, sir, I don't know. But when it came to me, especially over, this way the Lord tends to work with me, gives me a word, and then he spends the next year or two explaining it. It's usually a seasonal a process thing with me. If you stay on it, you keep feeding on it in your spirit and praying about it, the Lord will keep revealing to you almost like you go layer by layer into it. But he said, you, you don't know the power of history. And then he began to show me both positively and negatively. That there's power we can draw from in a good way in history. And there are bad things in history that are feeding today that have to be dealt with as well. He said to me, you disconnect. You think it's all chopped up. And in some ways, of course, we move on. But he said, I see history as connected. Today grew out of yesterday. And even though people want to just act like it doesn't exist, you can't. In fact, whether you like it or not, you were born with some Adam in you. Because history flows through our veins. The very bloodline, your roots, your DNA, you have some of your great, 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 great grandparents in you. And it's all connected, he said, iniquities, even the bad stuff can flow to the third, fourth generation. Second, third, I forget. Even the positive, the good stuff. Well, he said, that'll flow to a thousand generations if you let it keeps covenant and mercy to those who love him, keep his commandments to a thousand generations of Deuteronomy 7, 9. But the sins of the fathers also flow. That's not because God gets so angry he's going to punish two or three generations for, for what grandpa did. It's because there's a defilement that enters into the bloodline through sin. And even the earth gets defiled through certain things, and that remains in the earth for generations. That's why demons are drawn to certain places because of something that happened there that gave place to them. When the New Testament says give no place to the devil, it is literally the word land. It's topos. We get topography from it. Don't give any territory to the devil. So he started teaching me about that. And then he through a series, through through a, 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 a unique situation and and setting that I was in, he um, he brought to me Hebrews eleven three, which says, "By faith we know the worlds were prepared by the word of God, and what is visible was was made from that which is invisible, meaning His word, His words." But a better translation, because that first half of the verse. Even though this verse refers somewhat to physical creation, it is a much broader verse than physical creation. It includes physical creation, but it, 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 it goes beyond that to time itself. The ages. Because when it says the worlds were prepared by the word of God, world is not physical earth there, it's ion. The ages. And prepared is not create in Greek. It's the word connect, katartizo. By faith we know that the ages were connected, put into their proper position. That's another meaning of katartizo. They were put into their proper position by his decree, by the word of the Lord. So God is the only one that doesn't start at the beginning. He starts at the end. Isaiah 46.10 says he declares what? The end 
from the beginning. So he starts out here and then backs up and begins doing it. So God never has to figure out anything. He never has to wonder where are we in the process. He never gets around to it. He never finally decides. He never makes up his mind. He's already declared the end from the beginning. So when interruptions came in his process or purpose, he's never taken by surprise because he already knows those interruptions are coming. So before the fall ever happened, he'd already prophesied the cross and the Lamb. Hebrews 11.3, the connecting of the ages. The word katartizo means to put some, either to put something into its proper position or connection initially, and this is what I'm about to say is important, or to reconnect something in its appropriate intended way. So katartizo was the setting of a bone that was broken. Or a chiropractor lay you on the table and adjust you. They call it aligning. That's a good definition of catartizo because they're taking that which is out of alignment and putting it back into alignment. A, taking a dislocated joint and snapping it back into place is catartizo. Because when it's dislocated, it can't function Picture what I'm about to say, but picture history also. Because when there's a dislocation, this arm may be healthy, but it can't function the way it's supposed to function because there's a dislocation. But somehow pop it back into place. Catartizo. Now power, strength, and purpose can flow back into that arm. So history has dislocations. You talked about a bunch of them last night. The shedding of innocent blood is a dislocation. Something happened back there and now instead of blessing flowing through that joint in history, there's a, a now pain and curse is flowing through that place in history. And the iniquity of the Father did something to the bloodline. And unless that is corrected by the blood of Jesus, repentance and the blood of Jesus, then something unclean is going to flow through that from generation to generation. So the Lord, he just started teaching me some of these things and how history is connected. And then he said to me one day, I want to teach you how to heal history. Because we're not at the mercy of what happened 200 years ago, 50 years ago, 500 years ago. God is outside of time. He can reach back 500 years if the right, which is like Daniel or Nehemiah. So some, some people in, in the last 25 years when the prayer movement started moving into what some of us called re identificational repentance, repenting for the sins of the fathers. There were a lot of people that rebelled from that and said, why would we be repent, repenting for something we didn't do? We just need to move on. Yeah. Well, they, did, they didn't, didn't understand these principles and didn't really honor all of Scripture because it's very biblical when God wants to move a people forward, somebody reached back and repented for the sins that got them in the mess they were in. Whether it was Daniel, Nehemiah, So he said, I want to teach you how to heal the dislocations of history. Even the very word restoration, which a lot of these words, biblical words, we don't fully understand because it's just almost impossible to take a Hebrew word or a Greek word and, and define and translate it into one English word. But restoration is, is, a, is, a, is a long Greek word, apokatastasis, and 
catastasis is um, the con it means constitution. Apo means re, so it's reconstituting something. The constitution of something is the way it's made. Or if it's a corporation, it's the way it's supposed to function or operate. Restoration biblically is the reconstituting of something back to the way it's supposed to be. May not even be the way it always was. You may have never been in God's destiny journey. So, you know, when he restores you, for example, as a person, he may not, ever, he may not even be restoring you to the way you used to be. He may be restoring you to the way you were supposed to be. Because that's the meaning of the word. But when he restores a nation, he's trying to get that nation back to his divine purpose and destiny. The way it's supposed to be. Acts chapter 3 says he, he, all, of his, all of the earth is going through seasons, chronos, chronoi, the plural form of restoration. Because since the fall, he's been reconstituting everything back to the way it's supposed to be. And Revelation guarantees us, the book of Revelation guarantees us one of these days, it's all going to be fine. Just the way it was supposed to be.